Uh. All right, let's run it. So I have, I've only seen um, Lego Lord of the Rings, I think. And the speedrun route for that is really fucking cool. There's a lot of really good out-of-bounds stuff, but I don't know any of the Lego Star Wars ones, so I'm hoping this is going to be really glitch-heavy, though I'm skeptical. I imagine there's a good chance it's going to be mainly just playing the game normally fast, which isn't as cool, but hopefully it has a great story around it. This game has insane glitches. Oh, thank god. Alright, cool. Oh, thank you for the 10 gift subs again, Lucy. Goddamn. And the 5 gift subs LEGO coach. Star Wars The Complete Saga. It's a Into game that millions Thunder, played upon Jarhead, original release. Key, and 15 Malkin. years later, nostalgia is driving another wave of popularity. As more people play LEGO Star Wars, a question emerges. Why How do we play it? How quickly can the game be beaten? The LEGO Star Wars speedrun has the precision of a 3D platformer combined with the glitches and tricks of a broken NES game. Oh, fuck yeah. And for the past few years, a dedicated community of runners have been battling each other to take the world record lower. This is the history of LEGO Star Thanks Wars world records. I think what makes speedrunning so special is the glitches and pushing a game to its absolute limits. Like, I don't dislike games where there's not many glitches, but I just always prefer ones that have such incredible tech to it. Just in introduces a whole new layer of a skill ceiling. And now, a word from this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Nice. For years, a player named Cabbage Shirt 300 was in search of the world's best mobile game. But then, a familiar game called Raid Shadow Legends Thanks introduced something new. In December 2022, Raid added MMA fighter Ronda Rousey as a <laughs> Wait, playable what? character. She comes equipped with some of the most powerful okay. skills in the game. That's a name I haven't heard in years. For both PvP battles and taking on tough bosses. By logging in and playing Raid for 7 days before February 20th, you automatically unlock Ronda. It seemed like Cabbage Shirt had found his perfect game. Interesting. But then, something amazing happened. Raid recently introduced a special promo code Raid Ronda, where you'll obtain 3 day 100% XP boost, 500k silver. I hope they do that for more celebrities. That'd be vehicles. that'd be really silly. Just enter the promo code Raid Ronda in game. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in Thanks Raid right one. now. Poof. Download Raid now by scanning this QR code or clicking the link in the description. Isn't she in the WWE? Not only oh, will you be getting unique bonuses valued at thirty dollars, but you'll also be helping me out quite a bit. Scan the QR code now and start playing today. Makes the resub Bob Dole. First, let's clear up any confusion with the timeline of the series. Lego Star Wars the video game was released in 2005, where you could play episodes 1 through 3. This was followed up by the original trilogy in 2006, Kirby. with episodes 4 through 6 being playable. Finally, in 2007, these games were combined into LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga, allowing you to play through all six episodes. While the three versions are all speedran today, the most popular one by far is The Complete Saga, the topic of this video. Now, the earliest full game speedruns of The Complete Saga date back to 2013, but it's a bit of a hazy timeline. See, back then there was no concrete rule set. The initial method was to play through episodes 1 through 6 in order Thanks on the game's so Super Story inch, Mode, hammy. which adds a timer Thanks to the so bottom oof. of the screen and doesn't have status screens between levels. Later, runners switched to playing the episodes on Replay Story, meaning you can use any red brick upgrade on any level. Since these records didn't have a standard rule set, and also some were filmed with a potato, we'll skip going over them in detail. However, serious props should be given to the record holders. 
Poshact, and Lexos. Hey, the champions guys. of the Complete Saga's early era. For the next two years, no records would be set. But in 2015, the community began to form once again. And for the first time, All because of a standardized meme. rules were created. All runs would be played on new game instead of replay story. Thanks for Prime Savior. All red bricks, which are unlockables that give you a special ability, were banned. And you could only play with one player. Calling in player two at any point was disallowed. Oh, that's interesting. These rules formed the I know the of Lego Lord of the Rings one uses two player mechanics. And the first record to abide by them was played by SM Kirky, clocking in at 3 hours, 44 minutes, and 46 seconds. Thanks for your sub overs. Now, this might seem long for a speedrun, but LEGO Star Wars is a long game. It has 36 levels, most of which take several minutes to get through. On top of that, there are also nearly an hour of unskippable cutscenes between Oof. the levels. So. Yikes. How did SM Kirky speed the game up? What the up? fuck, ew. Well, his general strategy can be seen in Negotiations, the first level in Episode 1. <laughs> he killed enemies 30, and built objects- Jesus, 36 isn't that much. My guy, do you know what a level is? Put it in perspective. Halo, the Halo campaigns, the longest one, has 13 levels. I think, right? Isn't it 13? I think it is. And it's Halo 2. No, 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 no. How many does Halo 2 have? 12. Halo 2 has 12. No. Fuck. God damn it, now I'm so spotty on it. Regardless, it's it's like in the 10 to 15 ballpark. Like, that's standard. I feel like 11. No, 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 no. It's more than 11, I know that. I just can't remember exactly how many. Point is, most AAA games have less than 36 levels, like, significantly less. Thanks, Resub Flick. And the Resub Hot Thought. 36 is a lot. That's a big chunk. ...needed to progress, but beyond that, he was running through everything as fast as he could. Oftentimes, there was no need to actually kill enemies. You it's 15, I'm on the MCC right now. Okay, 15 them, then. And if you die, you quickly respawn you and can keep going. In level 2 of episode 1, SM Kirky showed off quick platforming, jumping through the stage while avoiding slowdowns. Another simple strategy used was on bosses. On fights like Darth Maul and Jango Fett, SM Kirky used the Jedi Slash over and over, the most effective way to drain the health of bosses. So thus far, it seems that SM Kirky was still following all the rules of the game. Those levels he are much longer than seven minutes. He was just doing the possible and optimizing everything. I guess, speed. yeah, but it doesn't matter. I'm just saying but by no, pure quantity, there's more is a lot SM of Kirky did we've yet to discuss. Because like I said earlier, Lego Star Wars is a broken video game. Mm, okay, nice. In level 5 of episode 2, you normally have to use one bomb to take out one side of the barrier, then go back and get a second bomb to take out the other side. However, the collision of the barrier stops extending out to the right once the right side is destroyed. So, by doing a precise spin move, you can make it around the barrier without having to backtrack for the second That's bomb. That's cute, so it's, it's simple time saves, nothing too big right now. Skip. Okay. and saves roughly 14 seconds. In level 2 of episode 4, you normally have to build and push a block to progress through the stage. But if you instead veer off to the left and double jump off of a slope in the wall, you can make it to a platform and skip right through it. Once again, this saves roughly 14 seconds. And in episode 5, one of the biggest skips in SM Kirky's run takes place. To end level 2, you have to get on top of the Millennium Falcon, and the intended method to do this involves unlocking a door to release animals and jumping off of their backs. Instead, SM Kirky precisely spaced a double jump to barely reach the top early. That seems pretty easy to find, seconds. nice. In all, there were more than a dozen- I still really want 
to push a game to its limits that no one else has done. I'm still heartbroken that for Amok Runner, my skip didn't work because the fucking game's programming didn't actually load in the final cutscene. Like, I found a way to skip from the beginning of Amok Runner to the very last second of the game. Right off rip. But the game is so shit, it didn't load in the final cutscene so the trigger doesn't work. I'm still devastated. And no one else besides me gives a shit about that game, so there's no one trying to figure out how to make it work. So it's just gonna be dead. My skip will never be fully realized. <sighs> I fucking love finding little skips and shit in speedruns. It's so rewarding. Thanks to Tier 1, Snake Spear, and the Risa, Bad Encounter, Josh, Estiva, and the Prime, Legend, and Chosen. ...and tricks like this across the run, adding up to minutes of time save. There's honestly too many of them to go over in depth here, but many of them followed the same pattern. Doing a precise jump somewhere you're not supposed to in order to skip doing something else that would take longer. We'll see more of these tricks later. But as a whole, SM Kirky's run was on another level compared to the runs from 2013. Hey, congrats, Y2K. Fewer mistakes, more tricks, and a cleaner speedrun overall. It was a great starting point, and it stood as the record for almost a year. But in mid-2016, along came a player known as TSG. And what TSG did that guy to the sounds world record like a gamer. was this. Makes the reset gullible. In 2016, a runner named TSG came onto the scene. By June, he'd have the world record. And over the next year, he'd do that nine more times. His dominance can be attributed to a few things. First, his skill level was well beyond that of any other runner. The only one who was close was SM Kirky, but he couldn't catch up. Second, this was an incredibly active period of discovery for the game. You'll see soon how many new tricks TSG was able to use. And third, TSG played the game on PC. Mm. This wasn't fully known at the time, the PC but Master running Race. the game on PC is much faster than any other version, mainly from having faster load times. Yeah, I feel like that should have been common sense. TSG's first record was a 341.17, and after the first level, he was presented with the option to save or not. Tier two hoof. After you hoof. save for the first time, you lose a couple seconds from auto-saving after every level. However, it does allow you to reset the game before a cutscene plays at the end of each episode, since your progress is saved before then. This allows you to more quickly start the next episode instead of okay. watching a long cutscene, especially after episodes 3 and 5 and the time save is further compounded from the fast resetting that you can do on PC. And of course, he had a plethora of new strategies to use, particularly in Episode 5. One was in Stage 5-2. C-3PO can't jump, so you normally have to build a cart to take him up this ledge. But instead, TSG just punched him and pushed him up, <laughs> saving roughly 22 seconds from not having to use the card. That's a fucking cool strat. And in All right. 5 All right, I like 4, that. you normally have to have Yoda teach Luke the Force and build bridges for R2 to use. But why do that when you can just use bad collision detection in the wall and get up anyway? This was discovered by Grubo, and saves a solid 30 seconds. But the most notable trick in the run was one known as DV3, short for Darth Vader 3. In this form of the fight, you're supposed to deflect objects into Darth Vader, then eventually glass comes down and you can jump across. However, it's just barely possible to jump across without mm, the frame glass, perfect. meaning you can skip the entire fight. You have three frames of leeway between the two jumps and the double jump, and it was easily the most difficult trick in the run. But if done properly, you would save over 70 seconds from not having to fight Darth Vader. And thanks to these three tricks and more, despite having some big slowdowns, TSG had his first world record. His record streak would continue over the following weeks, and the run had a couple major changes. 
First, he changed the episode order, playing episode 5 last. Players were allowed to play them in any order they wanted, but putting episode 5 at the end was beneficial since its ending cutscene was the longest, and timing stops before the cutscene plays. This way, it's not included anywhere in the final time. And the second change was the removal of a leaderboard rule. Red bricks were no longer banned. That meant he could use certain unlockables as he found them throughout the game. The two big ones he used were exploding blaster bolts, which lets you kill some enemies quicker and blow up certain barriers, and infinite torpedoes, which means you always have them behind you in the flying levels and don't have to go pick them up. Having these two upgrades across much of the run saved several minutes, and when combined I figured, with better I execution that would of be other bigger tricks, time saves. allowed TSG to take the record under 3 hours and 30 minutes. New strategies were also getting discovered left and right, and in late 2016, one of the most obvious oversights from the developers was found by a player named Osumnal. On the last level of Episode 1, you're supposed to fight Darth Maul by forcing objects into him. But over on the right, there's a lamp, and for some reason, everything below the lamp is considered by the game to be out of bounds. You can stand and jump in any out of bounds area, so it's possible to just jump off the wall to the top of the lamp and across to the other side. As simple as nice. that, you could save 30 seconds. By April 2017, TSG had taken the record to 3 hours and 24 minutes, and with second place by himself more out than here. 7 minutes behind, he was in full control of the world record. However, in May, a key rule was lifted. Back in August 2016, the ban on red bricks was lifted. And now, now players a big were day for allowed all of us. to call in the second player. Oh, let's go! to the world of one player, two controller strats. So this is where it was really cool in LEGO Lord of the Rings with what you could do with the two player strats. So what's the benefit of using a second player? Well, LEGO Star Wars was designed to be a two player game, and some sections can be completed much faster with the second player. In 4-5, for instance, if you have one player, you're supposed to build a cart to go over buttons fast enough before they turn red. But if you're using two players, no need for the cart. There's a couple sets of these buttons in 4-5, and if you skip using the cart for both, you save a full minute. However, you're not allowed to have a physical second player to help you out. You have to do everything Thanks alone. Thanks Cannoli. So, whenever you want to call in player 2, you have to control them both at the same time. It's known as 1 player 2 controllers, or 1P2C. And on PC, I like that. That's cool. there's three options. Makes it sound really intense. You can use two controllers, you can use two parts of the keyboard, or you can use a keyboard and a controller. Most runners nowadays go with the keyboard controller method, but in June 2017, TSG set a record with the controller controller method. The only point TSG used 1P2C in the run was in 4 5, but the community knew there could be applications elsewhere. Less than a month after TSG's run, it would be beaten by a new player, Rauschmore. Mm, he had been a, a new face. for a welcome, while, welcome, but welcome. rapidly improved his personal best in mid-2017 to take the top spot. He too used 1P2C in Stage 4-5, and thanks to a couple new strategies in Episode 6, pulled ahead for a new world record by 90 seconds. However, TSG was up to the task, and just a week later, he took the record back. By the end of the year, TSG's time was down to 3 hours, 19 minutes, and 30 seconds. How many players can you have? The 319 just run had a notable new trick in the first phase of the third. To show you what I, I keep referencing this, so I might as well show you what I mean. In LEGO Lord of the Rings, it has an actual pretty cool speedrun I was considering doing that uses this same method. I don't remember what the world record time is, though. Oh, it's Hobbit. Sorry. Lego the Hobbit, not Lego Lord of the Rings. So what you can do with the two-player method here is you can blast yourself out of bounds. Where is it? Somewhere over here. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Here it is.
and then you can eventually get like a huge launch and then you just go through the entire game just outside of the map. It's a long, long trek. But you complete the game after that and it's really cool. I still might speedrun this. I think I probably will. It's a short one. It's only 10 minutes. Like, I might as well at least get on the leaderboard. Who's the recent e girl? Maybe that'll be the next one I speedrun. Turning the game into open world. Yeah, I, it's cool. You just go right to the end, you hit another one of these clips, and then you're through. That's the route. Why do you like this and not Elden Rings? I love the Elden Ring speedrun. What are you talking about? I didn't like Elden Ring zip speedruns. Nobody did. Like, I don't think there's anything super cool. It's cool, but I don't think it's super fun with the zips. Like, I'm just not a huge fan of the zips. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, it's this. But prior to the zips being the common run, I loved it. I speed ran the fuck out of this for like two weeks. Motherfucker using a metronome? Well, you have to. It's extremely precise, so you gotta use the metronome. Next to resub. None. Isn't zips only allowed in one category? Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, it's the unrestricted category, it's right there. Vader fight. After dealing two hearts of damage, Darth Vader- How does that work? Uh, I don't remember the technical explanation, but what's really cool about zips, and I think it's fascinating, is it's something people found by complete accident because it's a problem with the game itself. If you have your shield up and you just happen to slightly move forward on the perfect frame, you just get launched. It's just something that's in the game. ...jumps around and won't knock Luke's Stormtrooper helmet off. The you can then key. use R2 to precisely land on the white part of the panel, then fly and avoid a death plane to barely make it to the other side. Once there, you activate a platform for Luke, and open the door with the Stormtrooper helmet to skip nearly the entire fight. The trick, nicknamed DV-1, saves 45 seconds and was discovered mm. by a runner named Zolus. When combined with DV-3, it was quite evident that Stage 5-5 was becoming the most critical point of the run. Speaking of Zolus, he would set the game's next record, a 316-12. He implemented 1P2C across the run more. Okay, Some this is on my brain, so I want to vocalize it. This is just... This is just getting all the neurons firing, and I can't let go of my Amok Runner thing. I think what might be fun... I'm not sure I'll pull the trigger on it, but I at least want to put the idea out there. I think what would be really a fun thing to do, since we haven't done a bounty in a while, is just choose a dog shit game like that, and then put a bounty on it like... Whoever has the fastest speedrun time in this game after a month gets 10 grand. And hopefully that would incentivize people to run it and find incredible routes and maybe end up with a really fun speed game and just keep changing the target for that every couple of, or like every month. I think that might be a fun idea. Don't know if I'll f like fully commit to that, but I at least want to put the idea out there as something that I think could be an interesting idea. Just keep trying to find great speed games, cool tech. And just making a fun event out of it. More small time saves, like deflecting shots so that R4 could safely activate the panel in 2 2, and others were more substantial. Yeah, Gervalin did in the Halo 2 lasso five, bounty. You could now it was use unbelievably Chewbacca hype. to activate the elevator and ride it immediately, instead of having to use Han Solo and wait for its second cycle. A time save of about 12 seconds. But interestingly, Zolus played the game I'm gonna write on that Wii. fucking idea down before I forget it. I think that might, I think that'll be fun. Okay. 
We know from before that this is slower than the PC version, but there's another consideration to be made. The Wii version requires using both the Wii Remote and the Nunchuck, so to do 1P2C, you need to juggle four controllers at Yikes. once. Sounds awful. Still, Zolas was able to pull it off with a world record by over three minutes. TSG played on Ultra Nightmare this up mode. a few months later with a 314.28. It was notable for implementing yet another trick into level 5 5. DV1 and DV3 already had skips, and now Darth Vader's fourth form did as well. It was possible to do a couple of precise double jumps and skip having to use the Force and having to use R2. They have the potential to save about 7 seconds, and just added to the skill needed in 5-5. Episode 5 as a whole was becoming really brutal, and since it has the longest end cutscene, it had to be at the very end of the run. So let's take a look at our timeline so far. Things the bits TSG freeze. started dominating in mid 2016. Just haven't seen Whale yet. And man. although he just twice had lost the record to see it, Rushmore and Zolas, he'd always been able to fight back. Two years later, his name was still on top of the leaderboard. But TSG's 314 from June 2018 would be the last record he would ever set. The game was about to enter a new era, because in October 2018, Rauschmore did this. Oof. Jesus, Rauschmore. Have mercy. Over the span of just three weeks, Rauschmore took the record from a 314 down to a 309. The key was the rapid discovery of new tricks by a runner named L-Tree. Tricks that would save up to eight minutes. Oof. And the first is it one tech? is really stupid. In 6-5, killing the Emperor normally takes a substantial amount of time. However, if you lure him over to the corner and die intentionally, upon respawning, you can just push him off the edge. That's hype. It skips the remainder of Wait, the that's fight so cool. and saves 45 seconds. Good discovery. Later, it was L -tree, discovered like you could w -tree, push him off at the start of the fight by calling in player 2. It saves an additional minute and is known as the Ultra Kill. Another simple boss skip was found in 4 3. You can skip the spy fight by using the again, force like, on R2. It, Leon and Mango. This pushes him past the trigger to start the fight, and if you call him in after, you can just go in the open door and save about 50 seconds. But the real big time okay. save was in 6 3. In this level, you're supposed to hop in your speeder and drive through the roughly 5 minute course. Instead, if you go into the corner of the end barrier with both players, player 1 gets placed above player 2, and you can do a 360 to make it over the barrier. This activates the end of the course, and you can skip the entire thing to save oh, several that's minutes. So good. These discoveries helped lead to 4 consecutive records from Rauschmore. What I love, so I have a love-hate with really long routes for speedrun, but what I find most impressive is the memorization of every trick, because that's a lot that you have to keep track of. The longest speedrun I've ever done is Psychonauts, and that's about an hour. I think the world record's like sub-50 now, but when I was running it, the, the record was about an hour, and I was pretty active with it. And trying to keep track of the tricks, when to use them, how to do them, where to do them, and being super precise and even frame-perfect at times is unreal. Especially after like 20, 30 minutes worth of already going through a run. The stakes are just so goddamn high. What is the Psychonauts world record much lower than an hour now? Why did I get hit with question marks? Oh my- wait, what? 30 minutes. Holy shit. Well, okay, that'll do it. Thanks to Tier 1 Cappy and the resub MCR in the Prime column. What new stuff did they discover? Glad to see it's still active. It's a great speedrun. If you guys haven't seen the Psychonauts speedrun, highly recommend it. It has some really cool uh, glitches, and there's really great movement tech as well. Unless you'd rather go drop and give me 20 right now! 
I'll just watch that on my own later and catch up with it. Maybe His I'll start running that again. final time, a 309 from October 2018, would be the final record set in the year. Always been 30, you just misremembered? No. This was set in 2020. I stopped running it when I switched to Twitch, which would have been 2018, late 2017. I haven't run this game since coming to Twitch. And I definitely recall it was like probably 40 something minutes because I used to be in the discord for a while my personal best was like 57 interestingly as the record stayed put at 309 the run started to get massive views on YouTube it went semi-viral and many people who saw the video Elijah. thought it could be fun to try running it themselves and largely thanks to Rauschmore's video, by early 2019, there was a new crop of runners ready to gun for the world record. Oh, good spread. In fifth place, there was Sinor with a 3.11.37. In fourth place, there was Wee Super with a 3.10.45. In third place, there was Osimnol with a 3.10.06. And in second place, there was Shred with a 30954. All four runners were closing in on Rauschmore's record, and it was obvious that one of them would beat it soon. The general consensus for the favorite to do so was Osimnol, but all four of them had a shot at it. And then, one of them broke through. On February 11th, 2019, Sinor jumped straight from 5th to 1st place to capture his first world record. He lowered Congrats, his personal Sinor. best by nearly 2.5 minutes in the process. Sinor had gotten into the game after seeing Rauschmore's video, and although he lowered his time quickly, he was comfortably behind the other record contenders. But the key to Sinor getting this record was 1P2C. He used it all over the run. He used it for multitasking, he used it to get one player in position while the other player built, he used it to push characters further ahead. These were small time saves on their own, but they added up when used across a three Thanks, hour run. Me. This was also the first run to use the incredibly difficult disco skip in 6-2. After building the speaker, you then try and position Luke so he's exactly 50% inside of the speaker once it's finished being built. The game doesn't know what to do when you're inside a built object, so if you're next to a wall, it will sometimes oh, push yeah, you through huge it, clip. meaning you can go out of bounds and skip building the disco party to save 40 seconds. This is a really precise trick, since you have to be positioned just right to clip out of bounds, but if you miss it, you can just break the speaker and build it to try again. With all the competition from top runners, people didn't expect Sinor's record to last long. But and it would it only didn't. last for three days. On Valentine's Day 2019, Shred took the retake. record with a 30627. Shred had been running the game for over a year, but only became a serious record contender early in 2019. And his record was an improvement by nearly three minutes, which was especially impressive given that it was played on a Wii. It didn't do much new over Sinor's record, but was better executed. It had a first try ultra kill and a cleaner episode 6 overall. Sinor fired back just three days later with another two minute record improvement. Thanks the Prime Yuka. The world record was now down to a 304. Sub 3 still looking possible. Had some significant slowdowns. Sinor lost nearly a minute on disco skip and over 30 seconds in 5 5 from missing the DV skips. So clean up those tricks, save a bit elsewhere. Episodes and add in a couple new strategies. Illiterate? And suddenly, Sub 3 didn't seem out of the question. In March 2019, two runners go. started to pull ahead from the rest of the pack. Sinor and Wee Super. Zoom. Both of these guys had only gotten into the game in the last few months, but they lowered their time side. Holy shit. Wii Super started Maybe a run of his own. Gift subs, Elden. And this run would Jesus finish Christ, at 2.59.04. 
the world's second sub-3. Oof. Had we super started his run just a few hours earlier, Roughly he super. would have won the race to sub-3. But instead, he had to settle for second place, while Sinor got the glory. But Sinor's record wouldn't last long. He beat his own run by 43 seconds just a day later. This run was notable for introducing a piece of RNG. In 4-4, there's a section where Obi-Wan is supposed to appear across the room on a bridge after you arrive. The way the game tries to get him there is by running through a room with barrels. If he gets stuck behind a barrel, the game turns him to try and get around them, which slows him down, but he still eventually arrives on the bridge. Usually. Sometimes he gets stuck. And if that happens, he Runs never dead. shows up, and you can't progress through the level. LEGO Star Wars is a broken game. Now, runners used to have a way around this. You reload the bridge room by entering and exiting the previous room, which guarantees Obi-Wan will show up for a two-second time loss. But players then found 4-4 cutscene skip. By jumping off of this ledge, you can hook back and enter an out-of-bounds area to Ooh. skip to the next room. I like that. This means a cutscene doesn't play and you save 18 seconds. Is However, I really I feel like getting out of bounds in a game like Lego, you can do a lot more than just go from room to room. But of course, I, I'm not in the community. I haven't run this game in particular myself. I just feel, well, we're also super early, so maybe they do. I feel like there's just so much room for out of bounds, especially in a game as linear as Lego. If you can just get out like they found here, I feel like you can really push the shit out of it. As a consequence of the cutscene not playing, you can no longer reload the bridge room the prime since you wouldn't be able to leave the previous room if you enter it. So, Obi-Wan RNG Bosky. was back into play. Thanks again, Elvin. If you didn't want to show up, you were in big trouble. A couple weeks later, a fairly substantial change was made. The community decided to alter the way runs were timed. Instead of starting when the players gained control in 1-1, it would now begin when selecting new game on the main menu. This was mostly done so that movement in the cantina would be considered in the final time. It added roughly 58 seconds to all runs. Aww. So, when Sinor set a record that would have been 257.36 under the old timing, it was retimed to 258.34. And that made it four consecutive records for Sinor. He was the first to sub three, and now he was taking control of the leaderboard. And for Wii Super, he just couldn't catch up. He perpetually remained slightly behind Sinor, easily in second Bronze place, kneecap. but ever since he missed his chance at the first sub-3, the world record eluded him. Thanks to the reset. But after the 258-34, Sinor announced that he would be taking a break from the category to focus his efforts elsewhere. Maybe this was the chance we super needed. With Sinor at least temporarily out of the picture, he could hone in on improving his time without needing to compete with anyone. And as it turns out, just two days later... Oh! It was only record by a second, but Wii Super had finally overtaken Sinor. It was a run with a great early game, but he lost some time on speeder skip and had a weak episode 4. Still, Wii Super had broken through. Was this a one-time deal? Or was he about to make something more out of it? Hmm. See, Nor comes back later, from that break. A 60 second record improvement by Wii Super, largely due to saving time in episode 4. The very next day, another minute and a half world record. Wow, you really Three unlocked the Sharingan. Later, two record improvements on the same day. Three days later, a record cut by nearly two full minutes. Then Wii Super took a break, and when he came back, another world record. My god. Seven records over the course of three he months. He got unleashed. The final one was a time of 2.53.04. After a while, Sinor had come back to attempts, but this time the tables were turned. He was the one who couldn't catch up to Wii Super. The way he went on this run was through both improving his own skills and utilizing new strategies. 
in 2-6, we super began using Dooku Skip. By standing on a barrel, you can force it with player 2 and clip Ooh. under the floor. By then dropping out with the inbounds player, you can lead them forward past the trigger for the Dooku fight and enter the next room. The trick was found by Xenor and saves up to 30 seconds. We Super also began using the Vehicle Smart Bomb Red Brick. It allows you to hold the special button in ship levels and make everything on screen explode, which can save you about 20 seconds in 5-1. And interestingly, with these new tricks being incorporated and runners' skill levels improving, someone new moved into second place, Chimkin. He had been in third place for months, even being a part of the initial sub-3 grind, but he always remained behind Wii Super and Senor. But he was improving, and by May, he was ahead of Senor. And sure enough, when Wii Super? Super woke up on the morning of July 6th, his record was gone. Chimkin had beaten it by over a minute, getting Damn, a 252 okay. flat. Sub 250 looking good. It was a run with a slow early game, but after a gold split in 3-2, he was off to the races. He pulled ahead of the record and crushed it. So, we Super had to get back to work. And it took him 13 hours to get the record back. Oh, nice. Over the coming weeks and months, we Super and Chimkin would trade the record back and forth. We Super was the first to take an under 250 with a 249.55 on July 17th. Chimkin would get the next record, and by the end of the year, it was down to 245.39. How did these two take the record down by 7 minutes? Well, there was a new red brick, Fast Force, which does what it sounds like. It lets you force objects faster. To obtain it quicker, Chimkin found a method of going out of bounds, then doing a death warp to get back on track. Oh, now it's getting it's really intense with the glitches. Nice. So players started playing Episode 4 earlier in the run so they could use Fast Force in Episode 6, 3, and 5. And of course, the glitches there are were a more plethora of new precise. strategies discovered in the second half of 2019. Some were small and saved a few seconds, while others saved closer to half a minute. But the big one was in 5-6. It's the last stage in the game, Isn't and it had an evolution Twitch of skips the over the years. Way back during TSG's record reign, runners started doing a trick called Bespin Out of Bounds. You'd jump roll off a ledge to land out of bounds, and progress forward in the stage to skip having to build C-3PO and open a door. That's it huge. 45 seconds, but was immensely difficult. Players used this trick for years, but in December 2019, Senor found something better. You join with player 2 and put Lando in a doorway. If oh, you just player hit him with the 1 door. stands far enough away and Lando jumps, the door will close. If it closes while you're at the top of your jump, you'll get pushed through the doorframe and out of bounds. Ultimately, you can get to the same room as you did from Bespin out of bounds, but it allows you to do so nearly a full minute faster, and is much easier. The only problem is that if you miss the door clip initially, AI characters can randomly run near the door and prevent it from closing. All oh, those you bastards! You really want to get the trick first try. You dirty bitch! With all these time saves combined, I'd be so mad if I was running that and the AI came back and fucked on me. Top of that, the world record was down to a really solid 2:45. It was enough for Wii Super to take a break from grinding the category, and Shimkin had stopped playing it as well. Other than those two, nobody had a PB under 2 hours and 50 minutes. But over the coming weeks in late 2019 and early 2020, the game would get a huge boost in popularity, thanks to an unlikely source. TikTok. Oh. <laughs> there was a big wave of nostalgia for LEGO Star Wars. Millions played it while growing up, and after years had passed, they looked back on the game fondly. A trend began on TikTok where people changed their profile pics to mimic how they look in LEGO Star Wars, with a green or blue circle around them. This increased the game's popularity on the internet as a whole, as people remembered LEGO Star Wars and wanted to experience it again. As such, 
speedrun streams and videos exploded in popularity, and starting in early 2020, there was a new wave of speedrun activity. And suddenly, by February, Wii Super had new competitors on his doorstep. Oh, in second place fresh was faces. Fresh. Oh, well, and fresh, in third nice. place was Led Astray. Both had a time of 247, mm. and both had aspirations for the world record. Wii Super had no choice but to do more runs if he wanted to defend his title. So he did. And in the span of just one week, he lowered the record twice, taking it down to 244.30. But this wasn't the complete domination that he'd had earlier. His competition continued to close in. Led Astray got a 246, and a familiar face had actually jumped into second place. Sinor. Hey, the hey, pressure hey. was on for Wii Super. These guys were both capable of getting the record, and could really obtain it any day now. Wii Super continued to do runs. And a couple weeks later, he achieved the run that put away any competition for the record. A sub two hour run Months somehow. Months of attempts had all Fucking led cheated, up to no this clipped. moment. It was his ultimate run. Throughout the first four episodes, there were no significant mistakes. He gained a bit of time on nearly every level, and leaving episode six, he was nearly two minutes ahead. Exit tier one mega mod. The final two episodes are three and five. And, and although they weren't perfect, they were good enough. And when combined with the incredible start mm. he'd had, the end result was a monster world record. Okay, that's he not super bad. Wasn't that much risk of losing his title anymore, or was he? Sinor wasn't deterred from the task at hand. Wii Super was now three minutes ahead. He probably ahead, found an even better skipper somewhere. Sinor knew he could close the gap. On March 27th, he took his PB down to 244, and on the 31st, he shaved another half minute off. Despite the optimization of Wii Super's record, Sinor was actually able to close in. These two guys were ahead of the pack. Just like the initial sub three grind, Wii Super and Sinor were locked in a battle. Thanks to the game's boost in popularity around this time, the community decided to have a LEGO Star Wars speedrun tournament. That's Wii cute. Super, Sinor, and most of the game's other top runners all participated. It was a double elimination tournament, and there were some great times put up by several different runners. But when all was said and done, after the brackets were completed, who else would meet in the finals <laughs> but Wii Super and Sinor? These yeah, two would get right. the benefit of a big new Man, strategy. I certainly hope this didn't all happen in the same day. Each of these runs is like two hours, forty minutes at best, like your best run. And fuck, how many rounds? Like this is like a ten hour tournament at least. Hopefully this was spread out over the course of a weekend. But we super and Sinor. These two would get the benefit of a big new strategy discovered a few weeks ago in 6-1, Spiderless. By using a forcible object, you could clip into the wall, the bits which was faster than the old method fame. of using the spider. Hey, welcome. You can then come back in bounds to touch a grate, which acts as a trigger for the game to send you straight to the boss fight and skip the cutscene. It was scene. months? Oh, okay. This trick saved a Jesus. full 60 seconds, a huge advantage for any runner who could pull it off. Up to this point, Sinor had lost one match while Wii Super was undefeated. So to win the whole thing, Sinor needed to win twice, while Wii Super needed just one win. And Sinor handily won the first game. Wii Super accidentally softlocked in 5 1, oh, you losing fool. several minutes and allowing Sinor to cruise to an easy victory. That meant there would be a winner take all match the next day to determine the tournament champion. This was going to be a tough task for Sinor. Think of all he had going against him. His personal best was nearly a minute behind Wii Super. He had lost to him earlier in the tournament, and he had gotten a pretty lucky victory yesterday thanks to a fluke softlock. He was going to need to play out of his mind if he wanted to win this thing. And so, on April 19th, 2020, in the final match of a tournament, 
Who's Brian with his Pre-J? opponent heavily favored to win. <laughs> in this tournament was two, first world record Huge. in over a year, back when the run was 16 minutes slower, and it was actually a close race through much of the run. But Sinor eventually pulled ahead, and although We Super finished with a 2:42, he didn't stand a chance. Sinor won the match. He won the tournament, and he got the world record. Was there and a the prize for the tournament? Sub 240 was officially I hope so. on. Once again, Sinor and We Super were the two competitors. Who's Mothman? As it turns out, Sinor's time at the top wouldn't last five long. Five candies. We cool. Super wanted the record back, and it took him just five Bag days of cigarettes. to do so. He got a 240 32. This run was actually on sub 240 pace until 5 5. But the last two stages of the run are two of the toughest. We Super lost a lot of time to DV3 in 5 5, and to Door Clip in 5 6. Sub 240 would have to wait. Imagine not doing DV3 second try. Ugh. Couldn't be me. Damn, that... Jesus, that door is really... <laughs> I feel like I could, like, see Wii Super's anger with killing the uh, NPCs there. Wii 45 seconds to door clip, and missed some oh. 240 by just 4 seconds. That's so sad. It's a great example of how tough the end of the run is. Door clip is in the very last stage, and if you miss it initially, bad luck can make you lose the record. Over the following few weeks, competition caught up. A couple runners named Pickle Toe and Ginger Legend got times oh, in the 241 baby. range, more new faces. The pressure on Wii Super. And on July 14th, Sinor had a run on sub 240 pace in the 5 6. But once again, Door Clip killed it. He ended up one second behind the world record. We Super Damn, had waited heartbreaker. too long. Other players had caught up, and it was a dead heat for the first sub 240. But on July 22nd, you, Obama. We Super had a run with a fantastic first few episodes. He then lost his helmet in 4 5, but a great episode 6 put him back in the lead. He had a rough 5 5. But with time to save in 5 6, sub 240 was still possible. He got door clip quickly and left just enough room to get a sub 240. Nice! 39 49. Wii Super had won the We're race. We're coming! This was Wii Super's 22nd Thank world you, record. Typical. He'd faced competition from some of the best in the world, but time and time again, he had proven he could come out on top. With his sub 240 goal accomplished, We Super finally felt he could take a break. And the runners in no second shot. through fourth place, not in this, not in this game. Sinor, Pickle Toe, and Ginger Legend, had lost motivation after being beaten to the first sub 240. So, they all stopped running the category as well. Oh, what? For the first time in many months, there was little activity at the top of the leaderboard. That meant there was technically an opportunity for someone outside of the top four to swoop in and make a move. T -Pain. Let's take a look at who was in fifth place. This is E Roadhouse. He had been running the game for about three months and managed to quickly enter the game's top five. However, during the sub 240 grind, he was comfortably. Well, Lego Star Wars has an ultra shortcut. <gasps> Let's go! Level 1-4 is the pot Now we're race. fucking cooking. You have to drive around the course three times to beat the stage. For years, there was no way to really speed this up. Even the fastest world records I love ultra shortcuts. three laps. But in mid-2020... For those that are unfamiliar with ultra shortcuts, Summoning Salt also has great content on it here. Most known in, like, Mario Kart Wii. It's so cool. 
Ultra shortcuts are so fucking cool. Highly recommend checking any of these out if you're interested in really cool skips. P53, Havster, and Sinor combine to develop a trick called Pod Fraud. It's a very complicated trick, but the gist of it is that the game's only method for checking lap completion is seeing if you've touched an area on the far side of the course, and seeing if you've touched the finish line region. So after driving a lap normally, you go out of bounds with two players, leave one by the finish line region, and, one and by try the to get check. the other to the far side. Yeah, nice, smart. This middle section out of bounds kills you, but it lets you build up speed quickly. So, by dying a few times, you can build up enough speed to make it across. <laughs> Holy shit! By touching this region, the next lap is activated, and you skip having to drive around. This setup takes about 25 seconds, but a lap normally takes about 60, so you save over half a minute. The other big skip is called Grieve Cheese, discovered by Pickletoe with concepts from Fezteo. The general Grievous fight is normally a slow, scripted battle, where you jump around the level and then attack him on the main platform. However, he'll only perform his scripted actions if you're actively standing on this platform. So, you can use Obi-Wan to lure him toward a rock, then jump off the platform and shoot him with player 2 before he walks too far away. By oh, repeating this over and over, smart. you can drain his health without having him ever perform scripted actions. Unfortunately, there's RNG involved. He can randomly block your shots, which wastes time. But ideally, Grieve Cheese can save over half a minute. With Isn't all this moisture? and more, we super Reason felt meme. that he could crush the current record. And he was right. On September 18th, he beat E Roadhouse by just under two minutes, getting a 237.49. A few weeks later, he did it again with a 236.08. The leaderboard was back to normal. Wii Super was dominating the competition multiple minutes ahead of anyone else. And still, years after his first Murakami. world record, nobody could catch Wii Super. At least, not for a couple weeks. Just oh, 16 e days back. after Wii Super's 236, E Roadhouse managed to get the record back. The key to doing this it wasn't was yet a fluke. another complicated new trick, Falconless. The normal way to end stage 4-5 involves activating four triggers scattered throughout a big room, then killing all the stormtroopers. It's a slow process that gradually raises the Millennium Falcon, so you can eventually enter it and end the level. So you go out of bounds, hit the trigger, However, I bet. P53 found a way to end the level early. You first have to load the last room of the level, which can be done by entering this grapple room. You then go back far in the level, and by crossing a particular line, the game tries to save memory by unloading the last room. This means the triggers, stormtroopers, and Millennium Falcon all disappear. The issue is that the game never reloads them once you go back forward. So you re-enter the final room, you can just fall straight there. down. Since the stormtroopers are gone, the game treats them the same as if they were killed. So you can jump into where the open door would be, and the level ends. This saves about a minute and 15 seconds, and Huge. E Roadhouse's new record was a 234.51. That means that even without Falconless, he still would have beaten Wii Super. I wonder though. Maybe it was a flip. Just based off of what I've seen so far, and maybe they do do this, it seems like if you can, you can still just hit that trigger regardless, right? Couldn't you find a clip out of bounds and then just do a death warp and still hit that trigger on the way up? Or am I completely misunderstanding how the tech works? So that way you don't have to run all the way back. Thanks to the gift sub oyster and the resub Fulto. No, because it checks enemies. Oh, good point. Good point. Luke. Whenever someone took the record from Wii Super, he was always quick to respond. But a month later, E Roadhouse set another record, 234.32.
This was uncharted territory. When was he going to respond? Since nobody. So what happens a in a situation like that when you hit that ceiling, like where you completely blast a root's ass wide open and you master it? You have a perfect run. The only way you catch up is if you find new tech. You have to look for new glitches. That's the only way you can make up for the difference in skill. That's the only shot you have. No best below 236. There were no challengers for the record. However, that didn't stop players from continuing to run the game. But the nature of the competition changed. It was now a battle for second place, rather than the world record. About a month after the 231, a new runner moved into second. Oh, Ginger Legend Ginger back. Legend. A few days later, he'd be beaten by Sinor, getting a 235 and then a 234. Oh, hold on a second, they're starting to tickle. It's important to note that there were very few new strategies being utilized. The vast majority of their time save came from getting better at the game. Fewer mistakes, better movement, that sort of improvement. By February, a runner named Zack achieved a 235, and by March, there was a trio of runners with a 234. Sinor in second place, Ginger Legend in third place, and Zack in fourth place. Mm -hmm, For the mm -hmm, first okay. time since he set his mammoth world record, E Roadhouse was feeling a bit of pressure. They were still minutes away well, from yeah, his record. Oh yeah, it's not that close though. Their times were dropping. He can still relax. So he decided to end his break and go back to record attempts. But he struggled to get good runs going, especially compared to his incredible. Oh god, he fell off. On March sixth, Senor would once again lower his second place time, 233.05. He was now within 90 seconds of the world record. E Roadhouse continued his attempts, Thanks but so failed to get anything one good. In prime small. And then, on March 9th, Zack got on a run that was even with the world record through Episode 2, then actually gained half a minute over the record in Episode 4. Okay, Zack! Once again, this was mostly due to better gameplay rather than new strategies. He ended up losing time to the incredible episodes 6 and 5 in E. Roadhouse's oh. record, but still finished with Tragic. a 232-23. Zack was just 35 seconds off the world record. Sinor had a 233, Zack had a 232, and E. Roadhouse had a 231. All three of them were doing attempts, and all three of them had potential to get the world record. E Roadhouse's time had run out. He was now in direct competition with two strong runners. There was no some question the world bit of a respite. was coming down. The question now was which of these three was going to do it first? Well, on March 22nd, E Roadhouse broke through. It was only a five second record improvement, but it showed that he still had what it took. This run had another fantastic early game, but he lost about 45 seconds in Episode 6 from repeatedly missing Disco Skip. Episodes 3 and 5 were up and down, but since his gameplay overall had improved, it was enough to eke out a small record. But his work wasn't done yet. A couple weeks later, E Roadhouse got a 231.35, another small record improvement but he was making progress while Zack and Sinor weren't improving their times. Still, all three runners continued to grind over the following weeks. The end goal had shifted. Thanks, it no was officially a grind for the game's first sub-230. A half-hour barrier hadn't been what broken What date are we at right years. now? Are we still in 2020 or 20? No, this is in 2021. In mid-May, right? Sinor lowered his time down by over half a minute. All three runners were now within 60 seconds of each other. Who would get sub 231st? Would it be the veteran, the newcomer, or the current world record holder? Well, on Thanks May 14th, Garcia. E Roadhouse got on a run with another incredible first couple of episodes. Once again, this was his best pace ever, leaving so episode May 14th, 2021. He right faltered now. a bit in levels 4 2 and 4 3 so his pace cooled off slightly exiting episode 4, but after episode 6, he was still a minute ahead of the record. It was clear that this would be a golden opportunity for the sub-230. 
And then, in episode 3-1, something strange happened. E. Roadhouse was cycling through his splits to see what time saves he had left, and he accidentally paused his timer. <gasps> he realized Rookie this mistake. a short while later and unpaused it, but this threw everything off. His pace would now seem better than it really was. He didn't know how long it was paused, so if this run went all the way, he'd have to retime it to see what he really got. Well, E. Roadhouse made his way through episode 3, and it went beautifully. Episode 5 got off to a great start, and entering 5-5, he was a minute 21 ahead. But of course, his real pace was still a mystery. 5-5 was solid, and 5-6 was nearly perfect. And when he stopped his splits, they read 229.35. E. Roadhouse knew his run was slower than that, but the exact amount wasn't known. It all came down to how long the timer was paused. It was so probably just over 230. It had to be retimed. And the exact length of the pause would determine if this was the world's first sub 230 or if the race would continue. Like the resub cheeseburger. And after the retime, they found that E. Roadhouse's timer was paused for 21 and a half seconds. Oh, so just under. Meaning his run was a 229.57. He still did it, By baby! The skin of his teeth. He had done it. His sixth world record in a row was his most important one yet. E. Roadhouse officially had the world's first sub-230. In the aftermath of this run, Zack and Sinor continued doing PB attempts for a short while. Both players lowered their times, but neither could catch up to E. Roadhouse. Their motivation had just dried up. It seemed like another community break would be in order. But you're Thanks probably noticing movie. a pattern by now. Whenever community motivation is at a low point, new tricks are always found to bring people back in. God damn right. right on cue in May 2021, two massive tricks were discovered. One of them was a 30 second time save in 3-5 found by Los. But the one we're gonna go over was the one discovered in 5-5. This trick was notable for two main reasons. For waffles. one thing, it was in the toughest stage of the run. 5-5 was already a completely broken level. You had DV1, DV3, and the DV4 jumps. The new trick, fittingly, was called DV2. DV oh, I thought it was Every gonna go even higher somehow. Every room of the Darth Vader fight now had a skip. And the other notable thing about this trick, it was the most difficult one in the entire game. That's right, the toughest trick of the run was now in a stage that was already considered to be the hardest. This is the insanity of DV2. I hope it saves like you 10 minutes. You start by activating a moving platform outside the boss room, then positioning Luke on a panel beneath it and placing R2 on the platform. Oh, you send it down and you clip when out. the platform moves down, you can collide into Luke as he's sliding nice. off the panel. If done at the perfect moment, Luke will go through the wall under the floor of the next room, and you can just walk underneath the boss fight. Getting the clip into the wall is so precise that pause buffering is used to help line it up. And even so, every single step of this trick is hard. It's hard to get on the panel, it's hard to stay on the panel, it's hard to pause buffer at the right time, it's hard to line up Luke, it's hard to line up R2, it's hard to avoid going too low in the boss room, it's hard to avoid going too high in the boss room, <laughs> any of these portions not being I done like correctly that. results in I this. love those precise glitches, that but shit's great. But if done properly, it would save an additional 50 seconds. Oh, that'd a be a lot more. team of LavaFang407, Note KO, and EJP Man created DV2, and it made stage 5-5 a nightmare. Tough trick after tough trick, right at the end of the run. But with all the time save potential, people had to go for it, and it brought runners Zack and Sinor back to doing runs. They each got times of 2.30, and then on June 1st, Sinor set the world record. Hey, hey, hey Sinor back on top, six, baby! Particularly a slow ultra kill in 6-5, but he got DV2 This is his first record try. in a while. 
a fantastic result for such a tough trick. He closed it out 20 seconds ahead of the Roadhouse. Senor's first world record in over a year, back when the run was 12 minutes slower. So now, of the top three competitors, only one had yet to get the world record. Zach. He'd been in the top three oh, no. for the past five months, even moving be his to second arc. place on several occasions, but he had never been able to take the top spot. It was frustrating. He knew he was good enough, he'd been on pace before, and he also had a bit of time on his hands coming up. So, he sold Zach his crypto company. To start a devoted grind for the record. But this wasn't going to be just any grind. He was going to play the game 14 to 15 hours per day until he set the world record. Zach began on his quest, and over the next two weeks, he played the game for roughly 200 hours. <laughs> run after run, good That's pace like after RuneScape good hours, pace. my boy. And despite all that, that's he enough for a single level in RuneCrafting. In fact, he didn't even get a PB. Zach remained in third place, behind E Roadhouse and Sinor. Disappointing for sure, but Zach would still get another chance. Because on June 13th, runners Zach, E Roadhouse, and we Super all met up to grind for the world record 12 hours a day, with Sinor also participating at home. Only 12 hours may have been less than Zach was used to, but still, four of the best runners in the world, 12 hours per day, for three days straight. Surely a world record was incoming, but it never happened. 72 hours came and went with no world records. And here's why. Between all four runners, more than 20 world record paces were achieved into the final two levels. All of them died to DV2. Oh, it was such a hard trick. That's tragic. And trying to execute it when feeling the pressure of a record-paced run? Good luck with that. So for Zach, a grind of 12-hour days hadn't worked. 14-hour days hadn't worked either. Option. 16 hour days. On June 16th, Zach began a grind of 16 hour days mm -hmm. to get the Lego Star Wars world record. God damn right he did. Time is relative. And he never had any runs on record pace. Son of a bitch! It was starting to seem hopeless. <laughs> but on June 18th. I tell you Zach what, though. I, I can promise you one thing. He may not have got the record during those 16-hour-a-day streams, but he probably fucking farmed some ad revenue off of it on Twitch. Those are going to be pulling in some numbers. Those are some long hours. Finally got a run deep ahead of the record. And what a pace it was. Entering 5-5, his best possible time was 228.43. That was a good enough pace that he didn't even need to do DV2. He could get the record without it. But Zach was committed to going Ooh, for it. And on just his third try, he got in the wall. If he could just make it to the end of the room, he'd be in the clear. But disaster struck. He went too low and died. Zach, forcing no! him to start DV2 over again. He lost over a minute and ended up missing the record by just seconds. Had he skipped doing DV2, he would have had the world record. So, Zach kept going. More God, long this guy's sessions, mental. Fuck more me. failed runs. But on June 24th, he'd find himself in an eerily similar situation. A best possible time of 228.08 into 5-5. Once again, he could skip DV2 and still get the record. No, don't do it. Don't be a bitch. But once again, he was committed to going for it. My man. It was a decision that cost him the record last time. But this time, he hit it first try. Oh. He was in a golden position now. He closed out 5-5, got door clip, and when Zack entered the Millennium Falcon to end 5-6, he had just set a new world record Let's go. over a minute. After months of grinding mm, what a crazy and hundreds grind of hours Zach, of world record shit. attempts, Zach's efforts were vindicated. This record didn't stop others from trying, 
Sinor, We Super, and Erode House all continued doing record attempts after the in-person meetup. But eventually, their attempts stopped, in large part because 5-5 was such a demoralizing stage. So, throughout the rest of 2021, Zack's time remained at the top of the leaderboard. He's he went Sinjin from not being Gold able to Partizan set the record to Aussie. holding the top spot for six months straight. Wow. In early 2022, yeah, Zack decided to come back to the game. It had taken him hundreds of attempts and many months of grinding to set his world record. Over Bricko here? This man came out of nowhere. We're not gonna not gonna mention Bricko? Third place? Damn, and we still have like 20 minutes here. Jesus. Close. The community was as active as ever, but with no records being set, a big opportunity was going to waste. So, in an attempt to get the game a new world record, the community decided to organize one more big event. It was going to be another four-day break the record session. <laughs> but instead of the game's That's top so four sweet. runners competing, this time they expanded it to the top 10. 10 mm. runners, 4 days, and a goal time of 2.26. Nice. Even with this many runners, nobody knew for sure if a new record would be set. But one thing that wasn't in doubt was that there would be a lot of movement on the leaderboards. Zack and E. Roadhouse were in first and second place, and they were the favorites to lower the record. Just behind them were Bacon Soda and Bricko, still with hey, the odds to get the record. And beyond them was a mix of prior record holders and newer contenders. Salazar. Their and personal Rocket. bests ranged from Zack's 227 down to a 233. But all of them knew that they had a serious chance to move up on the leaderboard. Let the world record attempts begin. Zack and E. Roadhouse may have been in the best positions to lower the record, but fourth place runner Bricko got the first good oh, chance. Oh, here we go. Just hours into day one, Bricko he had mode. a run with a best possible time of 2.25.46 into episode three. There was still a ways to go, but it was easily on world record pace. Unfortunately, a poor episode 3 cost him the record. Son of a bitch. But he still got a 227.47. This was good enough for second place. It was a big motivator for the rest of the group, especially for the recently demoted to third place, E. Roadhouse. And toward the end of day one, both he and Zack found themselves on record pace in the 5 5. But DV2 would strike again. E Roadhouse finished with a 228. Oh, yeah, he got mad there. And Zach got that a 227. DV2 will get you. Zach's time was faster than every runner on the leaderboard, except for his own record. Day one had come and gone, and despite movement from some top runners, no new records were set. Day two featured a couple PBs from runners in the top 10. We Super got a 25 second PB cut, and Sinor moved from 5th to 4th place. But for most of the day, none of the top runners got anything on world record pace. Then, late in the night, after most runners were done for the day, Zack had a run with 227.11 potential into 5 5. But of Not course, 226, don't he care. still had to get DV2. As pussy stuff, we and don't he deal with that. actually did it first try. This was the best chance of the event. He had one tough trick to go. Door clip. And unfortunately, he couldn't get oh, it. That's unlucky. He lost over 20 seconds and finished with a 227.38. The best time of the event so far, but still no world record. Oh, Jesus, thank you for the 20 gift subs, Selendas. Thank you for that. Selendas. Day 3 featured Sorry, several more thank promising runs from Zack. Appreciate the He fat achieved drop. numerous 227s, but none were thank low enough to beat the record. There was a bit of movement from lower ranked runners, as It's Jared moved from 10th to 8th place. But as Day 3 was coming to a close, the record remained at Zack's 227.19. 
time was starting to run out. The game's top Next runners had gotten slow. close, but nobody had been able to break through. But then, toward the end of day three, those runners would get a bit of extra motivation. With all this attention on Lego Star Wars speed George runs, Lucas came a into new the equation strategy himself. was found in the Grievous fight. Oh. Before, Grieve Cheese could be used to get a quick kill, but it was inconsistent as he would randomly block your shots. But by switching your resolution to 800 by 600 instead of 1920 by 1080, the quick kill becomes much more consistent. On average, you save 10 to 15 seconds. Oh, this nice. wasn't Wait, an enormous shots time in there. save, but it was enough to give these runners a pretty big boost. Yet still, day three came to a conclusion, and no world records were set. I bet they find a more consistent go. way for DB2 Through is the my first guess. three days, neither Zack nor E. Roadhouse had set a PB, but Zack certainly had had the better chances of the two. He set numerous 227s, and with the new time save on Grief Cheese, he was in position to get a record if he could just get there again. But on the evening of day four, it was E. Roadhouse who found himself ahead of the record after episode six. After utilizing the new strategy and having a nice start to episode 5, he remained in the lead heading into 5-5. This was the level that caused Zack to miss the record so many times in the last three days. But E Roadhouse clutched it out. Oh, it's he big. got a first try DV2, and entering 5-6, his best possible time was 22640. E Roadhouse was one level away from getting a 226. Door clip. He needed to get door clip. Don't do it to us. And he did. Oh, let's go. After wasting about 20 seconds. Oh. The run was now teetering on the line of Fuck. being a 226 or a 227. And in the end, the run finished as a oh. 22703. It wasn't a 226, but it was a world record. It had taken over three Unlucky. days, but the world record had finally been achieved. Bittersweet world record. And interestingly, at the exact same time, Zack was on a run in episode three. Entering 5-5, this run Sean, too solid, had potential to get a 226. It was a chance to take the record right back. But his final two levels weren't good enough. He finished with a 227.07. Oh. If he had set this time an hour earlier, it would have been record. But he was too late. And with the event winding down, it was shaping up to be a pretty disappointing few days for Zack. He had done attempts for four days straight, and not only was there no 226, but he had lost his world record in the process. Runs continued on for the next couple hours, but the event had a hard cutoff of 11 p.m. to get your last run started. And as the last seems few kind of seconds arbitrary. before the deadline ticked away, Zack was on the main menu. Maybe he shouldn't even bother starting another run. Oh, there's going to be a little he storybook had done conclusion he gets it here. Over the past few days, and no 226 had Thanks come out of MG. it. Once I'd lost record, I was like, okay, I lost record. I no longer have a streak of records. It is what it is. That's totally fine. But I really wanted to win BTR, um, and I didn't want to go out on the note that I had, which was like multiple choked records in the event in previous days. Um, obviously, I wanted the record back. Obviously, I wanted to win the event. But getting the first 226 was still like the priority in my mind. So, with just eight seconds to go, Zach started his final run of the event. There she and goes. In doing so. He joined six the other world record in the middle of their own final runs. And I was like, this it's like run lottery has winners to where they play there like one There is no one world where I win. reset here because even if it doesn't PB, I have to get through this run no matter what. Once I started that run, I was like, I know I can do it. I didn't think I would, but I knew I could. During every cutscene, I would be looking at the restream just seeing who was who was on a run. And I saw that Ginger was on a really good run. And the reason I noticed this was only because I could hear the commentary. And the commentary was just like losing their minds. They were like, I can't believe that Ginger is like on this insane run right now. And I was like, this must be really good for how much the commentary is talking about it. Sure enough, 
it was insane. Ginger was the game's seventh place runner, with a personal best of 231.59. But with his back to the wall, at the very end of the event, he had somehow mustered a run on oh world record pace into episode He did it. Five, he did it to him. He went plus ultra. Four minutes ahead of his PB. Jesus Christ. Ginger has this capability sometimes to just play insane. He's an anomaly. He can sometimes just pull something out that you've never like even thought was possible. And I knew that it was it was actually a realistic possibility that he would get record and even maybe the first 226 just with that run. Was this really happening? The seventh place runner jumping straight to world record? Well, you Ginger bet your had sweet an up bippy. and down last few levels, oh, and he yikes. finished with a 227.51. Well, that sucks. An enormous PB, and definitely one to be proud of. But it still wasn't Damn, the world he record. He could have had it. Meanwhile, that door while clip, all man. eyes Jesus. were on Ginger, Zach had started off on an incredible run of his own. So we typically talk about a good run as exiting. We pay attention to our episode four exit. That marks like around the halfway point in the run. Previously, the best episode four exit was I think a 109.56. Uh, so getting a 109 episode four exit was something that had been done, I think a total of three times ever. And so what happened was I got another 109 and that is something that I wasn't even looking for. You don't need a 109 for a 226. You don't even need a 109 for a 225. And that made me a little nervous. But what happened next? If he was, was human, just that plain is crazy. On one of the games, but he's made of ice. Cases ever, Zach proceeded to play the best episode six ever performed. Now, this was not only the fastest pace ever; it was the fastest pace ever by over a minute. Zach was in position to demolish the world record. Damn, he's hitting him with a he big pop right, right now on the webcam. The final two episodes. <laughs> the run was pretty much insane. Uh, it kind of bled a little bit of time in episode three until I got to the infamous library skip. When I got there, I prayed to the gods, and those gods did not give me a first try library skip. They did not give me a second try library skip. They did not even give me a tenth try library skip. So I ended up losing around 55 seconds on that trick. Oh, no. Now at this point, I was like, okay, this is fine. Now I wasn't happy, it's only a minute. Now that might sound like an insane thing to say. This was such an insane run that I could afford a minute time loss. So I did lose a minute, and uh, everything was pretty much still in order. I was still way ahead of the record, and out of episode 3, going into episode 5, everything was was definitely still set up for me to That's fucking get tragic, a, a low though. 226. It was definitely I haven't even seen much. Library Skip be a tough one. But while yeah, Zach was, was just trying to navigate really through episode 5, the other players were finishing up their runs. And guess what? EJP Man? PB by over a minute. T-Fresh? PB by 18 seconds. We Super? PB by 40 seconds. Oh, wow, it was magic in the and air that night. all of this stuff is happening, and I'm on this run, and I'm like, my mind cannot comprehend everything going on. There's four people PBing, and so in my mind, I'm like, it's time to focus. So I close the stream. With all the other runners finishing, all eyes were back on Zach. He made his way into 5-5, still ahead of the record by close to a minute. When you're on pace, this level is the killer. I mean, it's no question. There isn't a level in the game that's even. Close yeah, you can't to fuck up DV2 here now. And I get to DV2 skip. That'll haunt you for the rest of your life. Shaking. It's very hard to pause buffer while your hands are doing this the whole time. So I have this uh, this thing that I usually tell myself. Things are like, beats. You can be nervous later, oh, but no, now first try. you have to hit the trick. I get the trick third try, which is effectively my first actual attempt at the trick. DV2 skip definitely, I would say, is a harder trick. But DV3, when the when the pressure is on, when the nerves are setting in, is just brutal. No. So I miss it once. And I'm like, that's fine. But when I miss it twice, that's when I start panic. to get a little concerned. Yeah, panic I is setting in. I think I missed in. it six times before oh. I finally got it. And at that point, I was like, uh oh, this is going to be close. The best spin opening cutscene is over a minute long. And I think that. That's going to be so sad. You get almost two minutes. So you can't miss door clip. Not even once. And be ready, you know, to prepare. The whole time, I was not preparing. I was sitting there, shaking, being nervous out of my mind. My heart was beating super fast. I could not stop thinking about what was going to happen. I kept telling myself, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. 
and I don't think it was helping. The toughest trick in 5-6 is door clip. It was a trick that killed many runs over the years, but this run was perhaps more important than any before. Zack made his way through 5-6, and miraculously, he got door clip right away. There you go. Alright, so it. now it's in the books. He had some leeway, and as he entered the last room of the run, he was in position to get a There she record. is! So I enter the end platform, the world and record. I look at my timer, and I'm like, I can probably do this. And a 226. This. So I get there, and I'm killing, the, I'm killing the stormtroopers, and it's going a lot worse than it usually does. I should have absolutely been cementing like a low 226 5x here, and I was actually starting to lose a lot more time than I thought. What? How? And I took a very bad death. Oh, we got killed. Kill? Stormtroopers that just died, which is just a flat two seconds. And I was like, okay, now I'm cutting it really close. So I kill the last guy. I look at it, and I literally just say, please, 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 my God, please. I didn't know what to do. He gets it with a 226.59. I hit the door. I looked at the timer. 226.59.7. Yep. Wow. I was at first in disbelief for about half a second, and then I lost my mind. I could not believe it. I was just so proud of myself to finally get the 226. The amount of emotions running through me were just... That's huge. I couldn't believe it. That's so big. The 226 was incredible, the culmination of Zack's and others' efforts since the start of the year. But it wasn't the end of the road for LEGO Star Wars speedruns. There was still room for improvement as a lot of time was bled in Episodes 3 and 5. So, even in the few months after the event, there's been a lot of record improvements. Just a few days after the event ended, oh, Zack lowered the record by another 21 seconds largely from cleaning up the final two episodes. He'd then lower the record down to oh, the world's oh, first Jesus. 225, thanks in part to a new strategy in 5-4 by EJP Man. Meanwhile, both E Roadhouse and Ginger Legend were getting close. E Roadhouse had a couple runs that barely missed record due to a missed skip, and Ginger Legend had taken his PB down to a mid-226. Of those three runners, Zack would have the most success in the following few weeks, ultimately lowering the record to the first 224. He's a prime wick. But that's not who holds the record today. That honor goes to E Roadhouse, a 22443. Mm. This record featured a fairly slow first four episodes, okay. but had the strongest final two episodes the mantle back. ever in a run. That's where the world record stands today. To most, LEGO Star Wars is a game that you played 10 years ago for fun, I didn't ever play then it, never actually. touched again. It was a neat distraction, and a source of nostalgia, but in the end, LEGO Star Wars was a game of the past. But to this dedicated group of speedrunners, this Jesus game Christ. is so much more than that. They've been able to yeah, I know the world thousands record got of lower. hours I saw of enjoyment, summoning salt tweet about creating it two days rivalries ago. and friendships that but have But I didn't want to look years. at it, I didn't want to be spoiled. They've given the game a renewed boost of popularity, years after its heyday. And over the course of a decade, this is how they've lowered its world record. Thanks Damn, for watching. look at that. Jesus Christ. This period was probably the most turbulent down here. This was the one where it got, like, really crazy. Because a lot of the new faces came in around here, and then this is where it just got cutthroat. Fucking 16-hour-a-day runs. World record. Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. Gotta love an active speedrunning If you community. enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out. Crypto Thanks. chart. True. Thanks for your sub, Kalo. Yeah, I, I definitely think I'm gonna pull the trigger on my idea I talked about earlier. I think I'm just gonna choose, like, some obscure fucking dog shit game put a bounty on speedrunning it, and whoever has the fastest time after a month gets like 10 grand. See if we can find like the next like best speed game. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Summoning Salt fucking crush this, man. Every time I watch a Summoning Salt video, I immediately get back into speedrunning. So I think I'll probably speedrun Lego The Hobbit. Is this on Steam? I hope so, I don't wanna have to download like an emulator for it. Let me see. Give me two seconds here, let me see if I can find it on Steam.